Hey, Rob from Morning42 here, and today we're gonna to be doing something a little bit different. I wanna talk about fan edits and what it means for, you know, movies as a whole, you know, the, the, the fan community. You know, is it something that we should pay attention to? Is it something to just, you know, just a bit of fun? What's it all about? Uh, I do wanna mention that I apologize for the lack of uploads on the channel. Um, a lot of things have been going on, uh, movie stuff, uh, got vaccinations, you know, all that kind of thing. But, uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to get back into it and, and hopefully be a little more regular with my uploads. So, so thank you for your patience and without further ado, let's just get into it. So fan edits really started way back in 2000 with the release of the Phantom Edit, which is, you know, as you might guess, a re-edit of the Phantom Menace. I mean, you know, when that movie came out, it, it, it came under fire for being a little too, a little too on the kiddie side and, and less on the, uh, you know, the, the, I guess, say you, the Empire Strikes Back kind of feel, you know, it had more of a, almost like a, you know, Saturday morning cartoon kind of feel. So I understand, I mean, I understand those, those criticisms. I don't really feel that way anymore, I should say. I think that the Clone Wars, the, the cartoon series has actually done a really good job of, of kind of contextualizing the whole prequel trilogy to make it feel more, yeah, I don't know, a little, a little better, you know, and, and I actually really like the prequels now, but I can understand that there's a lot of people that might say, you know what, I don't like it when, when Jar Jar says this, or I don't like it when Anakin says yippee or whatever, you know, and you can take those things out instead of trying to explain what the, what it might feel like. You can re-edit it yourself, put it out on the internet and I don't know, have a conversation about it. My biggest issue with a fan edit is when is when people start to form their opinions based on something that it was never planned to be, right? I mean, I always sort of take the side of the creators, right? That the person that's that's written this thing and put it out there for the world to see, the world to enjoy. I mean, at what point do you say that 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 someone else's opinion that has nothing to do with the movie wasn't paid to do anything on the movie? Does their opinion matter any more or less than the creators themselves? That it's a it's it's an interesting debate. I'll just say that. To me, I would never I would never watch a fan edit as the only way going forward for me to watch a movie, but I know there's plenty of people out there that probably have different opinions on that. Probably the biggest site out there when it comes to fan edits is, is fanedit.org. Um, pretty much any of the fan edits that you can think of are probably available or at least linked from this website. So, so yeah, if you're interested, you can check this out to me again, it's, it's that, it's that idea that we're going to, you know, form a community of people talking about movies and, and that I, I really can get behind. Um, and I, of course I will also say if you decide to go on here and download some of these these fan edits of the movie make sure that you own the original copy of the movie you know that's i think that's the least that we can do if we're going to have a conversation about for example the star wars trilogy or the prequel trilogy or whatever if you want to have a discussion about it you need to have at least given the creators there too and if you click over here to the ifdb the internet fan edit database yeah, you can see a lot of the different uh, the different uh, fan edits out there, and of course, look. I mean, you can see there's there's tons and tons and tons of examples and franchises that people have gone in and made their own fan edits to. And of course, here's like fan fix, a fan mix, extended editions, documentaries, shorts. It, this is a very very interesting place to to see some of these fan edits and and what they might have to offer. Now, what got me into this conversation again? Uh, this this whole mode of thinking was that I was reading this, this article on Reddit about the Hobbit and how, you know, the original Hobbit, I think the, the conversation was, was around the fact that they thought that the original cartoon that was like an hour and 15 minutes was a better adaptation of the Hobbit than the three movies put out by, uh, by New Line and Peter Jackson. I tend to agree with that, right? I, I I'm a big fan of, of the original book. I didn't need all the extra fanfare and all the extra action scenes and love stories and all this other stuff that, that went on in the, uh, in the new line trilogy. So yeah, 
the in the conversation they said that there was a fan that tried to edit the existing extended editions of the hobbit down to one movie that you know was a little more in line with what jrr tolkien originally intended now here's an example i mean this is a this is the hobbit and the lord of the rings in a, a little handy little uh, thing here um i just want to point out that the runtime for the original hobbit theatrical edition was seven hours and 54 minutes. This one mo this one book, theatrical editions for Lord of the Rings, these three books, nine hours and 18 minutes. So eight hours, nine hours and 18 minutes. There might be a problem here. Now you can find this linked off of uh, fanedit.org, but but yeah, this is uh, Dustin Lee's J.R.R. Tolkien's The Hobbit, and um, yeah, you can you can go on here and and check him out if you like. Um, I really really enjoyed it. He edited the three movies down to four hours and twenty one minutes. So again probably a little closer to what Tolkien had intended for the for the story to be and I feel like it really works a lot better. I own all editions of The Hobbit on Blu-ray. Uh, I own the theatrical and extended versions. Of course the the extended versions are almost 9 hours. So from 7 hours and 54 minutes to uh, almost 9 hours. So it's a, it's 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 quite a bit, right? But my whole my whole problem really stems from the end of the first movie, right? Because to me, Thorin's arc is completed at the end of the first movie. And there was two movies to go. I couldn't really understand what was happening there. Because, I mean, to me, that's part of the tension throughout the whole book is that Bilbo is unwanted and and basically looked at as, as a fifth wheel or... 14th wheel, however you want to look at it. Basically, he's he's just looked down on by the other dwarves for the most part the whole time. It's only after everything kind of comes to a head at the end of the at the end of the book do they realize that Bilbo was really worthy and and really uh you know really worthy of being in their company. So it's it's one of those things that always bothered me about the about the movie itself. But then, like I said, the, there's so much just extra stuff. I mean, I've, I think many people know by now, uh, if you've paid any attention to me, I don't like the Two Towers. You know, the Lord of the Rings, the Two Towers, I don't, can't stand it because, God, the Battle of Helm's Deep is so freaking long. It's just so much action. When, when, when really Tolkien was not about action, he was about story and character and the feel of Middle Earth. So, yeah, I mean, I can totally understand why a lot of people, you know, might have looked at The Hobbit as, man, maybe it's, uh, maybe it needs some help. So this J.R.R. Tolkien's The Hobbit, did it, did it achieve what it set out to do? I mean, I think in a lot of ways it did. And of course, based on what he was given, he had to sort of make decisions and, and make, make cuts and trims, you know, along the way to try to get as close to the book as he could. I appreciate that because there was a lot of in the in the movies that I just was like, why is this here? Why are we doing this? For example, the love story, Tario, right? Evangeline Lilly's character wasn't is, is not in the book at all. Legolas is not in the book at all. So a lot of it just seems so like so fan servicey and 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 just unnecessary. You know, I mean, it's just, it's, it's one thing to try to, to write a story, you know, with, with everyone in mind, right? I mean, but let's be honest, the book just wasn't written that way. So to try to make all these changes and to, and to try to insert all of these extra things to try to appeal to a wider audience, I just, I just don't agree with that. I just don't, um, I don't think that it's necessary, but I mean, with what he had, to work with, I mean, he did his best. I mean, Azog is still in the movie. Um, it's, I still, I hate the idea of having to have this, this thread of, uh, of a character that, that just follows them and, and tries to, tries to murder them the whole time. It's the, the, I never looked at the book that way or even the, the movie. It's, it's sort of like they get in all these little adventures and they have to work their, themselves out in that situation. There's not like this, 
this guy chasing them from the beginning. So I never cared for the character Razog, but he's still there. He's still there and, and you still have to, you know, you have to deal with him. Um, so, I mean, it, it's like I said, I think it's worth a watch if you're a fan of the original uh, book, The Hobbit, or maybe even the old cartoon. It gets closer, but it's still like, God, this is this is so long and drawn out in a lot of ways. So, I don't know. I, I would say check it out. And, of course, I would say that, you know, if you have any of these movies that, that are on uh, the uh, the fanedit.org and you're you know, curious about checking them out, I mean, why not? Especially if you own the originals and, uh, you know, maybe you, you're a big fan and you're like, well, I'd like to see someone else's take on these things. But I don't know. It's, it's such a weird thing. You know, I think about Evangeline Lilly, right? And the idea that, you know, would she be upset, you know, if she heard that that people all over the internet just completely removed her from the movie? It's such a weird thing. Like, I kind of feel like on one side, it's like, well, I really, I worked really hard, you know? But the fact is, she's already been paid. She's already moved on from that project to work on many other projects. In fact, the exposure she got from The Hobbit, you know, boosted her, her star power, right? And was able to get, you know, The Wasp and Ant-Man and, and things like that. So th there's a part of me that I'm like, I don't think she cares anymore. You know, what, what, what's done, that's in the past and it's no big deal, you know? But at the same time, it's kind of like, if it were me, right? And I wrote a movie and I directed a movie and put it out there for everybody to see. And then I see that people are cutting it up because they thought, oh, well, this is stupid and I don't like it. I, I don't know. I I kind of feel like I'd be upset about that. But then again, if I moved on to another project and had my heart into that now, I mean, I might not care. It's, it's such an interesting thing. You know, you look at it from a fan point of view. It's just fun and it's, it's, it's a conversation starter. But from a creator point of view, I, I feel like... I don't know. I feel like it's kind of, it's kind of like spitting in your face. So what do you think about all this? Have you watched any fan edits over the years? Have you, have you been to fanedit.org and, and checked out many of these? Let me know what you think down below. We'll talk about it because that's what, that's what we love to do here, right? Let's chat about movies and stuff. So guys, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.